Hey there, and welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Tom Shortridge. I want to go out on a limb here and assume that you're all familiar with Earth's next door neighbor, Mars. For centuries, scientists and astronomers have been fascinated by the red planet. What we know today about Mars is that it is a cold world covered in rocks and deserts, and most recently, it's been confirmed to have water ice on its surface. Unfortunately, liquid water flowing across the surface of Mars for long periods of time isn't a possibility now, because the sun's ultraviolet rays would boil it away if the water didn't freeze first. That being said, the likelihood of Mars once having liquid water on its surface is supported by images that show what appear to be dry riverbeds and by minerals that are formed in the presence of water. Now, just because there's no water on the surface of Mars doesn't mean that it couldn't be right below. Recent satellite imagery suggests that water may still flow in brief spurts on Mars' surface. Here are two separate pictures of the same crater on Mars. The one on the left was taken in 1999, the one on the right in 2005. Do you see the difference? The one on the right has a new deposit. Perhaps it's frozen water that briefly flowed on the surface. So if there is water beneath the surface of Mars, perhaps there's life too. After all, as far as we know, all known forms of life require liquid water. So what else can scientists look for to answer whether or not there's life teeming below Mars' surface? The answer is methane. And it just so happens that researchers have discovered just that. We are studying the uh, effluence or release of methane from discrete regions on the planet Mars. Uh, this is particularly interesting because the question of whether Mars is still alive, either geologically or through biochemical uh, processes, is one of keen interest to NASA and to indeed the entire space science community. Uh, Mars is a, a world that uh, has so far not shown evidence until now of uh, gases being released from the subsurface region. But now we have in fact been pursuing that and we have shown that indeed there are sites where Mars is breathing in a way. So, Dr. Muma mentioned that the methane gas that was discovered could be from one of two sources, either geological in nature or biological in nature. So those are the two different hypotheses. On Earth, 95% of methane gas comes from biological sources. So is it safe to assume that this is probably the case for Mars too? Well, you know, it's uh, very risky in science to uh, follow, have two uh, competing hypotheses and in advance suggest that one is more viable than the other. Uh, the proper approach and the most productive one, and the only way in which you can really obtain objectivity is to treat them as uh, equal in priority, follow each hypothesis to predictions, and then go and test those predictions. All right then, let the debate begin. Is the methane source on Mars biological in nature or geological in nature? The best way to figure that out is to apply science. But where to start? Perhaps our own Earth can be of some help. The interesting question is, if we uh, identify places where methane is produced on Earth, does that tell us anything about Mars? Uh, we think it should, because in fact, uh, the two planets have somewhat similar histories. They both had uh, massive oceans. Uh, Mars, of course, no longer has an ocean, and Earth does. And we see many of the same geological constructs on Mars that we see on Earth. Massive shield volcanoes, the first billion years of Mars history, it was wet. We know that on Earth, during that same one billion year interval, life arose and diversified. So we have every reason to think that uh, uh, there might be um, areas on Mars where life did arise. It may still be present in some favored, protected regions. So how can we find out more? Well, using telescopes works great, but we can only do so much from down here within Earth's atmosphere. Eventually, we're going to need to get much closer to the red planet to find out more. These vents, or sources of methane, are signposts uh, to which um, we, we might look and say, okay, they're telling us that this is a very active region, this is a place where we could imagine putting a landed spacecraft on the surface for detailed measurements of the organic uh, compounds other than methane that should be released and could tell us whether they're, they're being produced by biology or by geochemistry. So the mystery continues, at least for now. Down the line, engineers will be working on the next generation of Martian spacecraft and landers that can analyze the Martian surface in the areas where methane has been discovered. Data from those instruments may provide the evidence needed for Dr. Muma or scientists who follow in his tracks to draw conclusions that will support their hypotheses about methane on Mars, or the data may send them back to the drawing board to rethink their ideas. In the meantime, scientists will keep looking for patterns on the red planet and comparing what they observe on Mars 
to what we know about Earth. After all, why not get the best of both worlds? Well, that's it for now. I'm Tom Shortridge, and this is NASA Launchpad. Thanks for watching.